Okay, is in our uh, other DV9000 repair uh, that we did previously. We noticed that the uh, the uh, heat sink was off of it, and this is actual 9000 that we just took apart. And uh, what we're seeing is uh, standard heat sink that goes across here, the heat sink that goes in, and attaches here uh, so the heat pipe comes across and actually goes to here pretty common and this is uh, standard on a DV9000 as we just take it apart so what we're going to have to do is um, take this off and take this off and we're going to uh, take it out and redo it but before we do that uh, let's see if we can't get this uh, heat sink right here off because uh, I have a idea of what I want to uh, explain with this because with our G71 that we just took apart uh, we noticed that there was actually an aluminum uh, with tape around it an aluminum heat sink and uh, what we're finding is that that's not actually working so as we do the reveal here this is the same TIM material that we just put on that uh, previous system so and if you can't tell this is old hard concrete uh, thermal compound right here and that's what it looks like so as we seen with the other system that wasn't taken off that wasn't taken off and this right here was actually replaced so what's going to happen is uh, we'll leave this on the way it is clean all this up clean this up and then we're going to take this and reflow it on uh, here reflow it here and then reflow these VRAMs and reflow that actual chipset. Because underneath of this boot, as we've seen with our other system, uh, there's a chipset. Now, one thing that you can notice with this before we take it off, and as we do take it off, what happens is that heat pipe gets clogged. So, what happens is we'll clean that out also. And, uh,. And reflow all this and that'll that'll fix the system up just right but we're gonna have to take care of this uh, in the meantime also so we'll get right to that here in a second another side note is uh, when you see this uh, system like this uh, a lot of people look at this and say well it's not like the processor and it's not like the other heat sink but underneath this is the uh, thermal compound that goes on this chipset and if you don't clean it off you're gonna have the same problem so what you have to do is take a razor knife or take a pair of really good uh, sturdy electrical tweezers and pull that up pull that aluminum off there and clean the underside of that to actually get it uh, clean correctly because if you apply it to the top or you don't clean underneath it you might as well just not even go through all the trouble of working on it you might as well just do the work then put this back on there and hope and pray that three weeks later it doesn't quit so uh, that's just a word of advice when you're doing it to hope that it doesn't quit so as I was uh, stating that's exactly what's underneath it here uh, you have the thermal compound right here and that's the aluminum and what you have to do is just um, you know pull that aluminum off and clean that out and it should be good to go but that's just an example just to show you what it looks like and how it's all dried up and hard and you, know, you gotta dig it off with something to clean it out but uh, that's what's going to happen if you don't clean it. 
Okay, what I've done here is cleaned up the uh, heat sink and I've actually put a new application of non-conductive thermal compound on there. And what we're using today is actually the uh, Arctic Silver Matrix. Um, it's just as good as this uh, Arctic Silver 5, but it's non-conductive and um, it works here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try it on this system. It uh, doesn't bleed as bad, but uh, what we'll end up doing is putting that back on there and the aluminum cover plate that goes over top of it. And as it spreads out, uh, it's going to spread, it'll cover this actual chipset right here. So that's what we have to do to put this one back together. But you have to uh, take the black plastic off. And then peel the aluminum off, scrape that all completely clean, and then clean the uh, stuff out of the grooves. You have to actually get in the cracks here and get the old compound out. But after that, it should look just like that one. You put a pea-sized amount on there and then go from there. Now, uh, with this system right here, we had a heat sink that looked like this and what happens is this is a aluminum clad cast aluminum uh, heat parts on it with a copper heat pipe and what we did for this customer is we actually uh, took an all copper uh, DV9000 it's actually a DV9700 this is a pretty standard uh, heat sink and fan system that we put in there but we did not have the uh, copper upgrade for this they do have all copper upgrades for these systems so what we did was we changed that out but keep that in mind also when you're doing an upgrade or breaking your system down that you can put all copper uh, heat sinks and fans on here um, and not you can upgrade from what you have currently which might look like that to something that's like this and it uh, would probably help it out some but um, we did that for this customer because that's what we had on hand so now we're running a burn in on our motherboard and uh, it's uh, heated up perfectly fine Everything's running on it fine. We got in the BIOS doing what it needs to do. And uh, with the uh, Matrix compound, it takes about uh, two hours for it to set in and do what it needs to do uh, to do a burn in. So you got to run your motherboard in your system for about two hours. So we're going to run it, uh, you know, until. 12 1 o'clock in the morning then we're going to reboot it and go from there but um as we have it right now we're going to say that uh this is a completed system uh, of course the user has asked us to test the lcd and everything like that but as far as it is right now it's it's running in uh, diagnostics mode burning in the uh uh thermal compound on the chipsets and everything seems to be running perfectly fine so we're going to call this system as repaired and we'll go from there okay so as our burn in time has come to uh, where we're at we've actually let this system run for nearly two three hours and uh, it's still up and running. Everything is uh, fine on it. We still have um, where we're heating up the uh, cores. We can fill them to the touch, heating up, and uh, everything seems to go be going just fine. And it's running fine. So we're going to say that this is a done system for the burn in. Now, what we may do is hook up a probe to it 
and just test and make sure that the temperatures are within range. And we'll do that here in a second and then explain the uh, burning process for the thermal compounds and what we're trying to achieve for that. Alright, so what we're trying to achieve here with this burn-in test is the fact that we're trying to uh, rate whether our uh, burn-in has actually heat set the uh, arctic silver compound. Now what we have here is uh, we put matrix on this system and it's signature profile is supposed to under specific loads is supposed to drop the core temperature between 2 to 12 degrees lower on the chipset. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to probe just the top of one chipset here. And as we probe this chipset we find that the heat from room temperature has went to uh, 81, 82 degrees. So, naturally, we'll let this calibrate back out. Since we've taken it off, we'll calibrate it out. Let it go back to room temperature. It should be 66, 67 degrees. Um, and then, what we're going to do is to prove our theory here and see if we've actually heat set this properly. And take this and put it on this chipset. Now, that's your coprocessor. What happens is, as you probe it, it's going to go up like that. So you're at 85. In theory, 85, 86. In theory, what should happen is, you should be able to put this on your copper and your copper should go higher than what your chipset is so there you go it's going 8687 89 so we're well within the at idle rest it goes two to three uh, degrees higher now it's four degrees difference five degrees difference um, so what it's telling us is that the actual uh, thermal compound is actually pulling heat off of the chipset and using the heat pipe here it's actually heating it up and then the fan is actually expelling that heat. We've done this by our probe and that tells us that our heat set for our thermal compound and then the burn-in that we ran for two hours just like the manufacturer uh, specified as far as the heat goes uh, for setting this thermal compound you're supposed to run it for two or three hours to cure it on the actual processor that has actually proven to do what it needs to do so we'll go back chipset so we're on the chipset right here and it's going up 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 and away then we take and we put it here on the actual uh, heat sink and that shows that at idle rest it's between 2 and 12 degrees then it actually pulls off of the chipset and push this to the heat pipe this is actually done five so five degrees at idle rest means that this thermal compound is within the manufacturer specifications and it's actually pulling enough temperature off to justify us saying that we've actually heat cured this system and that it's done